Hi everyone, Pierrick from P2Design. In this video, I will show you how I've made this steel frame for my latest animation. Since I've done this animation for my latest tutorial, I've received a lot of positive feedback regarding the steel frame during the impact. As you have probably guessed, it's mainly and deeply influenced by the Spider-Verse movie. While I absolutely don't pretend that I get such quality in such a short time, I will give you a few tips on how I've built it. So I will just spend like one or two minutes on the animation and then we'll go on to seeing how I build this current flame. Let's get started. One of the big mistakes I've made before I start animating this is not to watch some references of whip attack. So during the blocking stage I've posed my character as if he was going to strike with a sword or so. But you need quite of a slow and smooth movement to bring back the whip before striking with it. And I was missing this, so I fixed this after watching some references. The second thing is that I've made my whole animation before staging, meaning that I've first animated the character and then I've set up the camera. So I guess this is because I mainly animate for games, so I don't really uh, focus and care about camera. But I should have made a last pass of polishing on my animation after the staging. So on the first pose, we can see that we have a lot of empty space around our character, which made its silhouette very readable. So that's a good point. Then I have this subtle anticipation because he's raising something that is pretty light. And this anticipation goes into a second anticipation before the strike, where the line of action is pretty clear. Then I have a old position to let the whip fall into the next small anticipation. And here you can see that the right arm is not as readable as before, so that's a mistake. From there, I've created an extreme anticipation on only two frames. The idea is to make this pose contrasting with the next one. So I really like to use this kind of super short anticipation and very extreme. It really helps to read. And you can see that both curve and line of action are contrasted or opposed one to each other. So it bring more power into the motion and more readability, which is good. And then we go to our impact frame. And thankfully, here again, the line of action was pretty clean, even if I didn't made the layout or the camera framing before. The only thing I would have fixed is to make the right arm a little further forward so that it's more aligned with the back arm and the silhouette is more readable, something like this. So now let's jump into the steel frame. For the base lighting of the scene, I wanted to have strong rim lights, but I didn't want them to cast shadows onto the ground or to be seen on the ground. So I've used spotlight and I've made sure that the cone shape didn't clip with the ground. From there, I've slightly improved the shading of my character by using a Fresnel node driving a color ramp to put highlights in the base color of the character. I've been using Eevee to render the whole frame and the whole animation. First thing was to change the background color to something more vibrant, and that was matching the color of the body of the character plugged into a color ramp sent to constant to get this comic shading onto the character. I've then copy and pasted the nodes onto the red material to get the same kind of effect. Note that I keep a black color near the bright color so that it creates some kind of natural outline. From there, I'm starting building depth into the scene. So I've mainly been using simple planes that I've cut using the knife tool or using simple bevels. What I like about those simple planes is that they are already UV and wrap and it's really easy to play with the UV coordinates. I've mixed a simple gradient texture with a noise texture to get those kind of tears apart clouds. I've then mixed it with a position node to make sure that they don't clip with the ground. So anything with a value on the z-axis under zero was getting transparent. All the shaders but the character are using alpha blend as a mode here so that I can mix 
emission with transparency. There is no diffuse or stuff like this. Then I've started adding a few black lines. So I'm still using planes. I'm scaling them in object mode so that it's easy for me to rotate them by keeping their local coordinate. The plan is to mix orangey reddish colors, very bright and intense and saturated with black lines to bring depth and dynamism to the picture. I'm also using a very short focal length so that I got a wide angle. To make the dot pattern, I've been on Google and I've typed dot pattern, if that makes sense, because I wanted to replace the shadow casted by the character by a dot pattern shadow. So I've used the dot pattern I find on Google and imported it in my node. I've also used the shader to RGB node to isolate the shadow of the character so that the dot pattern only appears here and it mixes a black emission shader with a transparent shader. Since the shadow is used as a mask, if I remove everything, you can see the pattern on the whole surface. And when I add an object that casts shadows, you can see that the shadows become this pattern. I've then added a few planes still playing with the perspective using this dot pattern mixed with transparency. To make the impact on the ground, I've made some kind of ball shape using an hemisphere and cutting it into half. And then I've mixed up a gradient texture with a simple noise texture. Using the greater than function allow me to get a nice and sharp cuts around my smears. Then I've added a couple of planes to increase the impact sensation. Then I'd cut a few buildings silhouette on simple plane and added to them a simple emission shader that I've color graded so that it fit some atmospherical perspective in the scene. I've also changed the color of the cloud because they were too bright and I've also added a few black speed lines sort of things. Then I've imported the wall sequence in After Effects and I've made our special frame to last for 5 or 6 frames. Then in Photoshop I've created a bold contour on my character to make it pop out of the frame. I've also created the text layer in Photoshop. I could have done it in After Effects but I'm used to work in Photoshop so then I felt that the other sequence wasn't looking that good, so I've added the background into it and re-rendered it. Then I've played with the contrast and luminosity of the frame by playing with curves. I've also added a vignette effect that I have excluded by animating it from our comics picture. And finally, I did animate a slight chromatic aberration effect inside of the picture because they were using it in the movie to replace blur effect. So I thought that would be nice to add it. So it's very subtle in the video. I don't think anyone has seen it, but now that you know it, maybe you will spot it. Once I was done with all those color shenanigans, I've been on the internet to fish some uh, free sounds and I've mixed them up inside of Audition and I was done with the animation. This is the end of this video. If you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. This helps a lot and share it with your friends. If you want to see the whole time lapse, I've posted it in a previous video. In the meantime, take care. I'll see you in the next one.